very effective. So I think he's he's got a lot of utility, and, and he's commonly thought of as just a hero that can only ult, but I think there's other things to him. Also, in Feeble, this game, I, I would imagine it would be quite effective against Tiny. Yeah, that seems pretty big. Like, the, the amount of reduction you do to his right click is pretty huge. Even to his slaughter, honestly, like those two heroes in general. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. Enfeeble is the way to go this game, at least early on. If you're, you could also send like a bait mid and just Enfeeble the Tiny I, I, occasionally. We'll see that probably sure. at like level one or something, maybe, but. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we used to see that all the time when Bane was a little bit more popular. When in just 1v1 mid, Bane would just come over Enfeeble once, Enfeeble twice, and then. It's great because it's. <laughs> Like, sometimes you see supports just level 1. Like, say, for instance, you have an SF in mid lane. And your Skywrath wants to come help you and give you a free level 1 lane. So you get all the CS, and you, you pump up your souls, and then SF is gold. And he just takes with that and runs. Um, but with Bane, it's like the same thing, except you don't have to harass. Like, you don't have to you don't have to mess up the creep, creep equilibrium. You can just use your spell and then walk away. You don't even have Literally to Literally hit your Q button and just yeah. make the person so freaking mad. It's like, are you serious? It's the worst thing to lane against. Like, also, if you're like in a lane, a dual lane against a Bane, you're like, I guess we're just not getting any last hits today. That's yep. unfortunate, but at the same time, that's why the hero is picked. I think. Also, I mean, his ult and brains are good, but uh, or even just a tri lane, you just throw it on the. Uh, you don't have to be too aggressive. You just throw it on the guy that's farming, and then he usually misses most of his last hits. Yeah, it's actually pretty awful. We'll see how it works out for Puppy here. Team Secret, they literally go to Walmart to get the last pick troll warlord. Like, I don't know how you get that value pick, but. They got it, so uh, <laughs> it's pretty solid. Nice, I like that. Yeah, this is a weird lineup for Team Secret in the sense that they don't. I've never, I don't, I've never seen S four play Troll, and I rarely see RTC play Bristleback. I've seen yeah. RTC play Bristleback a lot, in like NEL and stuff, like for fun. Yeah. But I've never seen him play it, um, at least me personally, in a real game. Yeah, it's it's you again. You don't think of this as an RTC hero. Um, but at the same time, I feel like Bristleback is, is pretty solid, honestly. Right now, I think he's in a very good spot. Here is really tough to take down at the later levels, and he can do a lot with farm, honestly. That's the thing. Like, a lot of people, they kind of underestimate how much a Bristleback can do when he has, say, like, a Crimson Guard, maybe, like, a SNY. I don't know. Like, either, there's a lot of items you can work with here, so. It's interesting, yeah. man. I like the choice. Phoenix uses a very, very early Icarus dive. I was like, why are you missing HP? Oh, okay. So use the Icarus dive, trying to get down here as fast as possible to place the ward. S4 is bought very, very quickly, and because he leveled up his Icarus Rage, he's very quick himself. Boosts up his movement speed to 310, so he's actually going to spot out the Phoenix, despite Phoenix using this. Or is he? We'll see if Phoenix uh, places it. There's he gets chance. the ward off. Yeah, there's a chance he saw a snippet of him. I think Puppy just pinged him. I'm not sure. I think S4 might yeah. have spotted him out. They might know the ward's down there. But I don't think... Well, they counter it's the question. Yeah. Do they have wards on them, sentries? They, they countered it. Yeah, there it is. And All right, good call. The reason is because, like, why else would he rush down there that fast? Just to, like, scout things out and walk away? No, it's, it's obviously he's going to place a ward. There's no other reason to just rush down there. So yeah. nice uh, presence of mind there from Puppy and crew. So now the Phoenix is going to be a little bit less safe in lane. He'll have to be a little careful. He has a Chris dive, obviously. Pretty long cooldown. Um, already some aggressive posture for this top rune spot. Artiz is coming in. Says, hi, no one. We're going to just take this rune from you. Slaughter has to back his way. Tron can't really contest it. So Artiz going to forego his block to make sure that he gets the bounty rune. Meanwhile, bottom rune is picked up by S4. So Secret getting both bounty runes. Ugh, that's that's rough. Yeah, and another Icarus guy from 9 posh to try to snipe out the bounty, but just couldn't connect. Nice try, though. I don't think he had really anything to lose unless... The gods are really on S4's side, and you got some kind of lucky bash while he's at Chris. That would be awful, by the way. I would just leave the game if I was... I was yeah, I, that's it. I'd call GG at that point. Well, I guess I'm dead. Give away first blood. 10% bash chance. Ice Frog, please. It's just... The gods are against you at that point. So, this is actually not an easy lane when you think about it. If Puppy Katama is, like, let's say, Nightmare Right, Brain Sap, something like that. I'm pretty sure if you Nightmare him while he's Icarus diving, it stops it, so... Yeah, you That's just have to be huge. quick enough. Yeah. Also, base damage for Bane is like so good. Even without like yeah. out anything. No talisman, not even there. 59 base damage. That's what I love about Bane is his base damage is so high in lane, so. Yeah, and I was, yeah, it was 350 for his movement speed. So he's one of the fastest supports in the game too. So just a very, very good lane to support <clears throat> in zoning people out. Not to mention Phoenix with uh, having to buy that ring of protection. Because without that, he's got zero armor in lane. So... Yeah, it's going to be dual lanes here coming out for Secret, which is very smart considering they... Oh, Arteezy taking a lot of damage. It'd be all right. They just threw an avalanche to harass anyways. 
But look at this, Artis is level three. No one is level one. He's got a couple. He's got a, a decent number of creeps coming in his way, but still, this is what I talked about. Artis, he, he should have a pretty decent time here in the mid lane. Has his bottle now. Can pick up the next rune. That would be huge for him. He's he's already. He's feeling himself. He's 92. Kuroki gets the top kill as uh, they get the Witch Doctor. Cast going through. Zai puts some sticky napalm stacks in Tron. Not able to help his teammate out. And the first blood coming out from this aggressive dual lane. Bradley or dual lane top not really working out for Vega. They take down that poor, poor Dazzle. He's going to have to walk all the way back home. He does actually have a TP score. He's not going to use it, though. Yeah, he wants to save that for maybe a dive bottom or something like that. But yeah. Th this, is, this aggressive dual lane is really smart against Wisp combo or Wisp tinies because... You you can maybe have the Wisp transfer up top, but uh, it, it's just not, it's usually not that effective. Oh, wow, the no out way. Long range. <laughs> Look at that. That's only a level one nuke, but it still does so much damage. I'm pretty sure he was out of the range of that, but it's like the weird cast bug where like you get the animation off before you're out of range and it like completes the animation. It's strange how it works out. I guess Feeds Grip is the only one that does that, but they're going to jump in. They actually cancel Puppy's Clarity, I think, from Night Posh, but he was pretty much full mana. Arteezy is running into no one in the mid lane. It is 2 minutes and 40 seconds in. Arteezy's like diving past the tower. He'll take a couple of tower hits, but he already has level 2 bristle back. It only tickles a bit, and he has 13 last hits. In fact, Secret are leading the way in the top 3 CS of the game. They are off to a hot start. This is a disaster of a laning phase. Look at this. Arteezy's got well or two more CS than the Wiz, or sorry, than the Tiny. Totally crushing top. They're totally crushing bottom. They're they're winning every single lane. This is actually a disaster. This mid lane should be going a lot better. But the bristle back mid is so good for them right now. Yeah. And the IO just got his bottle, I'm pretty sure, not too long ago. And that that's really when you have to start being effective with the IO, but it was late. Three and a half minutes for your bottle is not really where you want to be. So already Arteezy is running rampant with his bottle. Level five, three points into the, the quill spray. If they run at him and he gets like two or three quill sprays, they're going to die. Top lane, Kuroki's going to get poison touched. And I thought there was going to be action, but no, there's not. As long as he just keeps the stacks up, like he's got two in the bristle back, that means that they ever go aggressive onto him. Then if he procs another one and starts stacking up even more, he's actually putting more aggression onto this oh one. He's going to have to tether away. But this is just, oh, this is just horrible for them. And this is what I thought. Like, they picked this Bristleback the second after it was Tiny was shown. And they even had a Bat Rider, so it was like, we know how effective this could be. Well, Puppy gets tossed. Avalanche does miss the timing a little bit, but the Acre Staff is going to go through. The Nightmare keeps him uh, alive for the time being. He does have six. They can't even kill him, man. They missed that toss avalanche combo. They couldn't get the kill. Arteezy's coming back, and Nine Posh doesn't have Icarus dive. He's gonna get body blocked. He'll die. Arteezy's right click, and the cool sprays will secure it. So, what should have been a sure kill? Actually, RZ could have get cast up. He doesn't have tether. Arteezy's gonna walk in cool spray once, and then Kuroki gets the kill with a right click, who just casually walks in from the top lane. This is more than a disaster. This is a, this is a goddamn travesty coming up for Vega at this point. This might be one of the shortest games in Dota Pit this season. I'm just saying, I'm calling it now. There's, I, I, like, what do you do? Do you go back top to maybe throw the Wisp on top and get a secure Blink Dagger on the Slardar? He's got 9 CS, man. Like, they, don't, they can't even win that lane anymore because back is just going to go to the jungle. Oh my god, Arteezy gets Avalanche, takes literally no damage. The toss is going to go through, it doesn't really do anything. Arteezy pops up some illusions. Now the cast's going to come through, and that's going to be onto a tethered target. No one. A couple cool sprays from death. In fact, one. Dead. It's going to be a double kill for Arteezy. Oh, you might be right about this being a short game, my friend. This is turning into a rough, rough, rough circumstance for Vega. They just got, like, outlaned totally. It was just much smarter lanes coming out from Secret. They knew exactly what Vega were going to do, and Vega did that, and they didn't switch it up. They didn't try to, you know, do anything different to throw Secret off. Secret got their lanes that they wanted, and Vega Zai can't might die. Probably their first kill of the game going to Tron. They get the Firefly up for Zai, but then he just pops up the Slytherin Crush, a Poison Touch going as well. Nice pickup, but they trade that away for a Tier 1 Tower mid. That might have been okay if it was an all flame tower, but you're mid-tier one tower at five and a half minutes into the game to a solo bristleback into a dual lane. How does that happen? Hey. Yeah, and this Phoenix is getting nothing. And even if he does get level six, Troll is a very, very good hero against him anyway. Oh, and they're going to find our Zeke. They have Brainsap. He does get fogged. 
Bronze gonna come in, gets the other on onto two. Puppy does have Nightmare, he's gonna brain tap first. Can Nightmare, there's gonna be the ultimate coming up from the Troll Warlord. Puppy might fall, Toss is gonna go. Shadow Wave, Arteezy in trouble, but they get the Grave off coming through. That'll be onto Tron. They're gonna pop up the Maledict, the cast. It'll be onto pretty much every hero. Kroki a bit too far in, it looks like he might die. Trying to get a trade Arteezy. here. Still alive, the Maledict, Arzeek might fall, does what? bottle up. Arteezy goes down to a neutral camp in the end. He kills himself to this big camp here. The Hellbear taking him down, and they actually trade away about three for one, although or three for nothing, although they lose Arteezy for nothing, so. He bought all of his items, though. I thought he was going to go for some kind of snipe bill onto the Slardar, who was really, really low, but he didn't have vision of him, so he just bought out, suicided, and then he's going to come back with full everything, and no gold loss, so. Really no harm, no foul here, like, it's totally fine. Um, it would be great if they could stop them from taking the stack and they know that there's a stack there. I also have it warded up there, so it's Puppy. That's what, that's why Puppy was there in the first place. So they could rotate in there pretty early on with RTZ now and, like, maybe another hero. And then just, like, that amount of gold for, for Tiny and, obviously, for the IO is just not going to be there anymore. Also, while that was happening, they rotated all five heroes from Vega. S4 was bottom farming. Zai was top farming. So, I guess space created for Secret in the end, although they lose a couple of heroes in the process. It's probably worth it. Yep, and here comes Zai. He's up here with the Firefly. If they can spot out this and kill this stack really, really quickly, it would be massive. Be he knows so he's huge. there. They he's also know it. that Zai is there, dude, yeah. So he's got to be a little bit full. He's going to have Arteezy to back him up here, so that's a lot of damage Secret to deal with. Secret needs more. They need more. Like, yeah, Arteezy's pretty tanky, but... Not this enough. is every member of, of Vega, basically. They'll take a, a couple of uh, the kills there. Arteezy's chasing him down. He wants that last tail bear. Nice. He gets two, gets two of the creeps, but... Ron is going to be uh, spotted out by Kuroki. They're, they're walking around. They're on top of this Observer Ward. Zai's going to get tossed up. He's in trouble. He tried to TP right in front of that ward. He's going to go down. Arteezy now going to get avalanched as well. Io Spirit's going to go through. He's taking a lot of damage. He does get a quill spur off, but they take him down. Two for nothing. And just a really kind of questionable... Yeah. of decision making there from from secret kind of just keeping in that jungle and staying a little bit too long i mean they're just totally not respecting vega's numbers like they have more heroes they have all their heroes in their own jungle i mean what what do you expect is going to happen like i said they just needed more like they knew they could have taken the stack they just needed more members to actually be up there needed they needed to wait for the bane or they just needed to not go so you know, it's just as simple as that they were just way too aggressive and didn't respect the numbers they had a 5,000 net worth lead. It's dipping down into about the 4,000 area. It's, they're still pretty far ahead, but uh, it's just decisions that they, they didn't have to make those moves. They could have maybe not gone for that, and they would have been fine. So they're maybe getting a little bit too cocky, a little bit too confident, perhaps. But at the same time, they're still in a very good position in terms of their farm. They're farming well. For Vega, what about this tiny? He's sitting in Treads Bracer. He has 34 last hits. That is the highest for Vega at this point, even the Slaughter sitting at 27. He does have a thousand gold though, so he's not too far off a of blink dagger, I suppose. But still, they have a long way to go here for for Vega to get back into this game, and it's going to be tough because Secret can keep putting on the pressure if they want to. Oh, and Arteezy, look at this sack he's taking at the Ancients. That is some farm. Oh God. Yeah, that's going to be really good. Uh, and Zai is very close to his blink too. About 300 gold and they'll have that. Problem too is that since they don't have a blink on Slarder, like, they can't really... It's going to be hard to utilize relocate aggressively. Uh, it, it's going to have to be relocate in response to someone else being ganked. So in that case, hopefully Dazzle can get off a very, very clutch grave. Buy enough time for relocate to come in or something like that. Look at this Phoenix though, man. He's not even level 5. Offlane Phoenix is the lowest level in the game. And even if, like I said, even if he does hit 6, like, that supernova is, first of all, awful at level 1. It only takes 5 attacks. And you have the troll ulti to help you out with that globally, so. Battle trains. And also, it's important to note that this was a, a dual lane he was facing, not a tri lane. So, it's pretty rough. I heard a joke about amnesia. Okay. Go next. on. Yeah, please. Finish. Uh-oh. Oh, I forgot how it goes. Oh, Didn't see, see that one coming. See, what makes that joke is the fact that he waited so long. That's what makes it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mop Packs. Joke man of the century. See, the, I, I, what I would I do joke, without him? I feel like I'm going to cringe at my own joke. Oh, man. Listen, that's what we're here for. Promise it, it's going to be fine. Go for it. Okay. Um, let's see if I can remember this and say it correctly. 
Uh, a polar bear walks into a bar, and he says to the bartender, I'll have a gin and tonic. And the bartender says, why the big pause? And he goes, I'm a polar bear. <coughs> Thank you. I'll be here all night. <coughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have two night, joke makers. Uh, you can oh, follow me on Twitter Lord. at Trauf Dota. Um, I stream occasionally, twitch.tv slash Trauf. You can find me there. Okay. I have a story. It's not really a story, actually. Kind of a, a quick note. I forgot to tell you this the other day. I was playing Dota, and you were playing that five-game five, uh, five game series between you guys and Fire. Uh -huh. While I was playing, somebody, like, I was playing with, like, a, like, this group of three or four people, and one of the guys is just like, do you know you sound like Trauf? Like, said that to you? Yeah, he said that to me. I was like talking. He was like, I, I guess so. I, I didn't. My name wasn't my name. I was using an AKA in the game, and I'm like, all right, that's cool, I guess. And throughout the entire game, he's just like, I'm gonna save you, Trout. All right, let's ult on him, Trout. Let's go, Trout. That was an excellent play. I'm just like, what? I swear to God, this <laughs> happened. There's a record of it, by the way, on my stream somewhere. And I'm just like, all right, that's cool. Just, the guy was pretty funny. And then 90% of the way through the game, he's just like, holy shit, you're mod, aren't you? Like, uh, what's up, dude? <laughs> so I just thought, I, I guess people say we sound familiar. I don't, I don't know how true that is. Uh, all right. I don't know. I, do you ever, do you ever listen to yourself, like recordings of yourself? I had to do this a lot in, in university because I try not to. That was my major was performance and dude, I hate it. I hate listening to myself. Yeah, it's, most people do. Yeah. I think, I think, I think a lot of people, uh, dislike listening to themselves and I think you have to do it. Like if you're. Yeah, and like you said, if you're in performance or even like doing what we do, like I have to listen to myself because I need to take like the feedback and learn like and take the criticism and okay, what did I do right here? What did I do wrong here? Like it's it's pretty much practicing, but it's terrible because I feel like I sound like an idiot half the time. Yeah. Uh, it's fun. It's good stuff. Excellent. But I'm sure I think a lot of people feel that way though about their voice. Uh, you, you know who Pavarotti was, right? Yes. Famous, yeah, famous opera singer. He hated listening to recordings of himself, too. Really? Yep. That's just like, I, I guess so. There are some people, though, that are like uh, singers and rappers, though, that'll put their own music on in their car. And I'm like, I, I guess? You're allowed <laughs> oh to God. do that? That's a little narcissistic. There's like a, a joke at uh, Donald Glover makes. It's like, I'm allowed to listen to my own music. It's not like I'm like, if, if somebody like, like works at Subway and they make a sandwich... You know, they're not allowed to, like, they, you know, it's not like they can't go back home and make a sandwich for themselves when they're done working at Subway, you know? Like, you're allowed to do that. I don't know how true that is. It does feel narcissistic to me, but I guess it's that's a good point. But... And there's a lot of fail fishes in chat. Chat, what's up? <laughs> I hope everybody had a good night. Uh... You yeah. know, okay, I was, <laughs> for my buddy's bachelor party, we came up to Vancouver when I was, uh, living in Seattle and his he wanted to come to Vancouver because his brother was only 19 because so, he you know couldn't drink in the states and I had to tell that joke to some bartender or to some chick some waitress at some bar or something because we had like this bucket list of things that we had to do so like it, some of the, some of the things were awful like I had to do that one <laughs> I just imagine you telling that joke, and then the, she what was the waitress's no response? Idea, it, she had no idea what the joke was, by the way. She was. Just but she like, just stood there, okay. stone face, like uh, yeah. uh, she like kind of like that 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 nervous giggle to a certain extent. She just smiled and kind of like shook her head a little bit, like eh, okay, and then what? Like she had no idea what the. You're just like at that point, you're like, I give up, man. <laughs> Fuck life. I'm done. Oh man, Chad. I hope you guys had a good night last night. Uh, I'm a bit hungover, so. Good stuff. Hope everyone else had the as fun as I did. As much fun as I did, I should say. I, I woke up this morning and I... Oh, God. Not a good time. Thanks, man. I mean, the things you gotta talk about when there's pauses like this. At least we keep it fresh and fun, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know why, P, you, you know why you can't trust people that do acupuncture? Why? Why? Well, Pax, tell us. They're backstabbers. Mm. <sighs> nice. <laughs> oh man, the dope I'm gonna get it. brew, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just gonna get an arsenal of jokes for next time because this is always gonna happen. This is why Mopax is smart about this. He knows that this is gonna happen. And what better like time to them. Yeah. What better time to bring him out than during these long pauses? Did he say by the way why why he was gone?
He said they were lagging. Okay. Uh, don't know DDoS, says Seema the Slayer. There's that's, that. There's no way. This is DDoS. Why would you DDoS the underdog? You bet on the underdog and DDoS the favorite. That's how you do it. Tim, can they hear you on stream? Yeah, yeah I, I just unmuted uh, because I got, I got okay. mad. <laughs> <It's just> like... <laughs> it makes no sense. I'm sorry, but if you DDoS, you do it correctly because it does cost a shit ton of money, right? Yeah. You hear that, DDoSers? So get your shit together. Jeez. Yeah, Christ, yeah come on. If you doing. want a DDoS professional uh, <laughs> tutorial here by Pim coming soon, you know, yeah. probably sponsored do by, it right. um, by someone. Oh, sorry, I went <laughs> wrong direction there. <laughs> I was gonna be, I was gonna be real concerned for a second. I was gonna be like, "All right, <laughs> Pimp's just talking." About, like, there's gonna be this really long pause in the vod or something like that. Just us not talking. Like, it's like I gotta That's make fine. sure Pimp's talking in stream. It, it just so happens I, I sometimes actually, when I'm talking to you guys, uh, there's been some, like in the last game or something, I was like, "You, you know, guys, I can always just unmute and tell the truth, ha ha ha." And I actually unmuted for this, and Chad was like, "Holy shit, wait, <laughs> there's a guy there." What? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. That's the thing, like, we always talk about this, like, illusory person behind the scenes that nobody knows, but, like, this is him. The man in the legend, Tim Uncle. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, man. I mean, I want, I want... I missed two so far in the game, I'm so sorry. Tough, I missed man. the first blood. Dude, I, I'm, I'm serious about this. How can Dazzle Slada feed away first blood against Bedrider, what was it, Witch Doctor? I'm, I'm sorry, but what the hell? Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. It usually doesn't happen, but at the same time, I just... I, I got The mad. nature of Dota 2, I suppose. Mad. Don't yeah. get angry, dude. Baby I should I should stop, you know, thinking and just doing. Makes makes stuff easy, I heard. Well, don't, don't, don't be too hard on yourself, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. To Reddit, come on, let's hashtag fire pimp. Reddit, if you make that post, I'm going to go crazy. Seven more minutes of pause time, says Dota Pit Season 3 admin. Good that's stuff. a lot of pause time. Yeah, that's oh uh, they have a long. We have a long time. Thank God we have mod packs in his jokes. <clears throat> yeah, man, mod packs. Let's step your game up, buddy. We gotta get. He's, gotta he's get chatting. Up. Come on, mod packs. Step up. Yeah, I can see him in chat, man. Uh, yeah, I've heard this. Mind. Please don't finish this joke. I know this joke. It's it's really not nice. It's very oh. mean. Oh God, here it comes. There's an Arcana giveaway, mod. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, is there actual an Arcana giveaway, or is that like part of a joke? I feel like it's part of a joke. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, yes, I believe so. Uh, That's a good one. <laughs> I think you should <laughs> you should check out the Gamers Book uh, uh, Steam page. I believe it's on there. Uh, I'm ninety percent sure. I'll um, check that. A lot of and also Dota Pit. I think on Twitter has a lot of the giveaways as well. You can check it out there. Um, so yeah, and, uh, a lot of the time, if you're if you're interested in getting giveaways, uh, Gamers Book on their Steam page has a lot of giveaways. Pretty much almost every single day of matches for for Dota Pit. So check that out. While we're waiting, also, uh, you guys might want to go ahead and think about getting that Twitch season pass. Of course, the money goes to the prize pool as well as your casters for High Ground TV. It pays us, uh, helps us out a little bit. Definitely would be worthwhile. Six ninety nine for a one time purchase. Get a lot of great emotes, a little bit of a, a nice little badge next to your name. So there's that. All right. Six minutes and counting. This is how lame I am. I'm actually on the Twitter. At those lame jokes. Just looking at really lame Is that an jokes. actual Twitter feed? Yeah, but it's oh like, I was like, okay, these are going to be so lame that they're funny. But they're actually even one step beyond that. They're actually so lame that they're not funny. So there's like lame jokes, not funny. Super lame jokes that they're actually so lame that they're funny. And then super duper lame jokes where they're just not funny at all. Yeah, that's, you got to find the right one, man. You have to find the, the lame but funny. Like, the super lame, because and then that makes them funny. Like, those are the best jokes. Because people are just going to be like, that's so dumb. But it's hilarious. Well, we're back in it. We did it, guys. Nine minutes into the game. Uh, there is going to be a nightmare on a 9 posh. S4, there's the Phoenix group coming in. 9 posh is going to fall. That that Phoenix not having the best time. He's not even level 5 yet. He was almost there. He almost got a creep to get level 5. Unfortunately, was not able to actually get there. And that's going to be the kill coming out for... Warlord, so nice pickup, and we're back. Yeah, he's ugh, that hero is just not going to do anything this game at all. He really isn't. And I'm wondering if it's because of just the lane setups and just the nature of how this game has started, or even if it was just a mispick. And by mispick, I mean, oh, here we go, relocate bottom. They're gonna jump in. S4 is gonna get caught out. Toss avalanche combo, easy kill, good rotation. And Posh Chippy's in as well to help secure that. Gets him to level five with the kill. He's the one that picks up the last hit. 
Not bad, S4 now stifled uh, in terms of his farm for at least a 20 seconds here. So they're e actually even in kill total. If only that meant they were even in net worth total, which is uh, not true. There's a 5,000 lead for Secret and a 3,000 experience lead. And now the Blink Dagger comes out for Zai at 10 minutes into the game. Pretty good stuff. Um, and they continue to get farmed, so. It's okay. I, I think this is, you know, Blink Dagger's on, on bat is just fine and dandy, but they have a number of ways to help whoever else is getting lassoed until he gets a fast four stab. So if he's not going on the Wisp, he can get stunned from Tiny, he can get stunned from Slardar. If he goes on one of those, they can get tethered up and healed or healed by Dazzle or Grave, so... While the blink is nice, I think he's really going to have to continue his farm for a, a fast four staff to really yank him away from the rest of the team. So, yeah, they are behind about five in net worth, but that that relocate actually, I think, is going to boost some confidence for the team of Vega, just knowing that how easy it is to kill some of these heroes, um, especially if it's not bris Bristleback. I have a feeling Secret almost needed to tighten up a little bit, because I think, honestly, they should be even further ahead than they are now, but they got too aggressive. It was that throw, that semi-throw. Oh, actually, They might find go. somebody. Blink Lasso's gonna go on to no one. They have Tether. Can they bring him down the overcharge? Now the cast battle trance is going as well. Death Ward, they'll toss him up and cancel, but no one. He actually gets the return kill, but still, Arteezy does pick up that last tip under the tiny. Should have been a bit better for Secret, but they get the kill regardless. Puppy goes for a Bane Midas because I'm rich or something, but... That's, that's insane. Uh, yeah, that's, you don't see that every day. That's really insane. He's got 33 CS, actually. It's funny, because I was looking at uh, Witch Doctor, and I saw a point booster. I'm like, okay, well, he's not buying anything. He's just letting Puppy get everything. Oh my god, Puppy has 33 CS and 25 denies. That's actually really crazy. You don't see that every day. Yeah, There's a smoke here. Bottom lane, they're looking for... Four? Somebody. They find S4 with a relocate. It's an easy, easy kill. Puppy's nearby, but only he can really nightmare and maybe even brain something know. that'll help out. S4 is going to get... Out. Maybe maybe they saw they, Puppy instead. They go. They're gonna walk through. They don't see they don't see S4. They're gonna go for Puppy instead. He's gonna get blinked on Slytherin Crusher is gonna go. Now the amplified damage, the shadow wave. He's gonna get his brain sap off. No. Relocate comes in. He gets to the nightmare. That was maybe not the right ability. S4 in trouble. Toss Avalanche is not there. Avalanche on cooldown for 10 seconds. Tosses around, but they're diving deep. They're going in. The only axes are gonna go. He'll try to take down the aisle. They relocate back out. TP and Croak is nearby. Artesia running in. Tron does have his Blink Dagger. He might be able to get out. He should. They're going to leave Seema behind and just say, oh, you're on your own, buddy. Yeah, that was kind after, of but... an overextension by uh, the Dazzle. They should have known that Wisp and Tiny were going to get out, so he should have had oh, a TP. Nine Posh. And... Nine Posh might get Blink Lassoed on. There it is. Zai walks right forward. I'm not sure why I didn't back up. That was questionable. He does have his Supernova, but Arteezy walks up, gets the double kill. Can't even press his R button. And a couple of return kills, turnaround kills, that secret just... Now Arteezy's super high up in net worth. This is a really sloppy game on both sides, honestly. Like, Secret doing that really aggressive play up into the jungle there to take the stack. A good idea, just only had two members when they went for it. And then the, these those last two deaths were totally avoidable from Vega. Like, maybe the Dazzle wanted to help out because they were being really aggressive and forgot he had a, didn't have a TP, but that last one, that Phoenix definitely should have died. They know they're doing Roshan. Arteezy's actually somewhat low on mana. If they can exploit this by running in there, I think they can actually fight this just because our- Oh, he picked up a haste room. Never mind. Impossible. They're going to use the Icarus dive. They're going to Supernova in the pit. Arteezy's going to try to break it down. And actually, the Supernova almost gets the kill on Dice 4, but he's got to be careful. This Roche now too dangerous to go in. Cassie's going to go through. Now the Death Ward onto the cliff. They could maybe try to get the Slytherin Crush off, but the Cass, the MVP Cass. Tron is going to get uh, use the grave on him, and that's actually going to save his life. He's almost dead. He's going to fall to Roche. No, Arteezy gets the double kill with the kill spray, quill sprays. It's a two for two. Arteezy looking to go back into the pit. Back and forth we go. Zai ready with a blink, but no lasso. Has no mana for it either. No one going to try to head into the pit. Arteezy has to go back home. And actually, Vega might sneak this Roche right out from underneath Secret. They should be able to take this. Puppy's going to walk in. No feeds, no mana either. They actually oh, he missed the, the avalanche. Stun. They're going in. Nightmare is about to go. He's going to oh, go the down. Zai now trying to go onto our Zeke. He will get the kill. It looks like actually uses the stick charge he earned, but not able to save his life. They're still going back and forth. This Roche, very important for either team. Who's going to grab it? Firefly about to run out. He's got to make a decision. He has to get to the low ground. He blinks away. 
Nine Posh is nearby as well. Wisp should Zion buy back. High ground. Now there's the flame break back. going in. They're probably going to take this down. Rose goes to no one. Arteezy too late to the party. He had to regen up in terms of his mana. He'll find Nine Posh. Nine Posh, no Supernova. Almost dead. Now the cast bouncing through. Seam of the Slayer. He's got mana to grave if necessary. He'll have to use it. Won't be able to. Now the Ruling X is going. Try just blinging out in time. They get the uh, Tiny as well. He gets the Aegis, but now in trouble. Toss under three, but not going to do enough. There's the Battle Trance. Craggy exterior going to work. No one is going to fall again, though. And in the end, Secret still somehow come out on top, despite losing out on the Roshan. Crazy, crazy fight. Uh, it's still relatively close to what it was as far as net worth and experience. I actually thought Wisp should have bought back. He had uh, 30 seconds on his death timer, so it was a long time. Could have maybe bought back and just totally buffed up everybody. Used his bottle a couple oh, times. Puppy. Here's a relocate puppy. Jukes it just a little bit. There's a supernova, though. It's going to hit a little bit of damage over time, and puppy will die. You think that's worth it for Nine Posh to use that ability there? Yes. All right. Because it's not going to do much else anyway. <laughs> that's a good one. point. Level one, yeah. Level one supernova. Not the not the best game for Nine Posh. Yeah, this there is was a kill. So. There was a small chance Bane could have denied himself right there. Very small. It, it, it could have been a huge play. I think it was off cooldown. Um, but it was a really good start to that. If they had just kind of initiated and gave the Phoenix a little bit more time with that supernova, like they just rushed him in the well, or sorry, rushed him in the, in the Roshan pit while it was channeling it, could have been a, a, just a five or nothing wipe, but uh, yeah. they were like caught up in some other hero. I don't know. I was watching Phoenix, but... Relatively even exchange, actually, overall. Yeah, but the fights after the Roche Pit haven't really gone away Vega besides killing Puppy there. And since then, Arteezy is pretty much, he has his Sanjin Yasha with this last creep. He'll buy it, he'll ferry it out, assuming he's got the highest net worth, almost 10,000 at this point. They have a 7,500 net worth lead, which all things considered, again, this could be a lot worse. But Vega, they're still in this game currently. The Blink Tank for Tron, well, he is going to get lasted. That is the longest range lasso you'll see. The Death Ward's gonna go. He's gonna get graved up. He might survive the cast, but Maledict, he should fall. He's gonna get popped up by that Maledict more than likely. Um, he'll follow the close brace. Slithering Crush misses. Arteezy kind of jukes it. Nine Posh throwing up the Flame Spirits. They're actually chasing after Arteezy. He might be in trouble. He is very tanky. Vanguard S and Y now flying out as well. He might just try to 1v5 this entire team. 1v4. Nine Posh has to Icarus dive away. Our Zeke does have a tether. He might have to use it. He's not gonna get it off. Buyback coming in from the slaughter. It's time to leave, says Secret. Time to get the hell out of here. RTZ is the one in front. Kuroki not too far behind, but he's going to get Slytherin Crush. Is that going to walk back in? But I think they're going to leave him alone this time around. Meanwhile, RC in the backside. Battle Trance is going to go. Will they fight this? RTZ is kind of low, honestly. Slytherin Crush does hit RTZ. Not able to juke it. Toss up. RTZ is low. He's going to fall. Big fight. Big turnaround for Vega. Big buyback as well for the Slaughter. Big everything. Yeah, the Wisp, uh, the Wisp even bought back. And they're still pursuing Puppy, taking lots of damage. They can't attack it, or they... Their attacks won't hit anymore. There's a stun from Tiny. Easy kill on the puppy now. So exchange is back and forth. It's a pretty fun game to watch so far. Crazy. A little bit, a little bit sloppy, I'd say, but it's definitely a, a slugfest, really. And I, I really like that buyback. I thought that was going to be like a, a buyback that it could have used earlier, but it still was effective right there. That actually turned out to be pretty good. I didn't see the IO buying back, but he clearly was there at the end of, of the fight. I think he relocated it and then tethered to somebody yep. in the backside, which was re really impressive. I think that, that really worked out as well. So, Yeah, and Tiny's got his axe and only 700 gold, actually, with the drums. So he went for the early drums for some extra stats and movement speed, which is... The movement speed is good against, you know, the Bristleback, because typically you just want to kind of out, kill the rest of his team, and then focus him at the end. And we talked about it. I think... Uh... You get to the late game with an, uh, a tiny IO combo and also the slaughter as well. And I don't know if you can stand toe to toe. I mean, they, they have a lot of work to do, obviously, but no one is, like you said, he's going to have his axe here probably after this ancient stack. And also, Nine Posh does get a, a Midas. So, level 11 going to be coming soon. He desperately needs to get some levels, and Midas will help him accomplish that. RTZ is the most farmed of the game still. S4 is getting kind of close with his Yasha. We'll see if he picks up, say, uh, an SNY, which he actually is very close to getting. He's going to have it after this Centaur Conqueror. And there you go. So again, Secret have this really early game fighting oriented lineup. Whereas if you if you are able to keep this Tiny alive and have him get some kills, he'll take over this game, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little worrisome of S4 not getting the BKB. Like the Yasha was fine, the Vlads is fine. and oh, They're actually looking for someone. They are smoked up. Oh, Lasso. They're going to find no one. They're going to relocate him out, though. Flame Breaks nice. cancels it. Beautifully done from Zai. Death Ward comes out. He'll get graved. He should still go down, but 
Maybe not. The Shadow Wave, they can't kill him. Whirling Axes and Arzig, even despite having that canceled, doesn't matter. They secure him and keep him alive. Yeah, normal, normally I would say, like, in those situations, you just got to go for the Wisp. And nine times out of ten, you're always saying to yourself, kill the Wisp, kill the Wisp. If you go on the Tiny, it's just a waste of time. You're going to waste all your spells. You're not going to kill him. I think that was still the right decision by Zai. I think they had a good idea. They canceled the relocate very nicely from Zai. Um, they just they just have the, the the damage to really get him over the top, and it was a really nice grave coming out from Dazzle, who, by yeah. the way, has maxed it, so he doesn't have to necessarily be you know very close in the fight to get that that grave off because he has the max range, which I think is the, definitely the right decision in this game. And when you think about it, it's pretty gross. They have a lot of abilities to keep up any hero that's tethered. Like, I mean, you have Overcharge, obviously, from the IO. He has Urn. Uh, you have the Grave. You have the Shadow Wave. So there's a lot of healing and a lot of sustain for Vega at this point, which is really nice because they, they this game is all about buffing up the Tiny and the Slaughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're doing a very good job of it. So Secret, who probably would have a good time if, you know, Mid either one of the IO. Oh, Arteezy? Icarus? Dive's going to go through the Relocate. Arteezy in trouble. He's going to fall here. It looks like the clip coming out. They are going to get low to a couple of Cruel Sprays, but they're going to keep chasing after Zion Kuroki. It looks like maybe not. Cask is going to go through the Supernova comes in as Puffy going for the huge Fiend's Grip does get the kill onto Tron. Brain Snap into no one, but he's still very tanky. Icarus oh. dive through the Flame Spirits off as well. He's going in deep, but no real kills on the back end of it, although Puffy's very low. They did a lot of damage over time there from Vega, and they take out a big target in RTZ. Yeah, and going back to the point of the troll, I feel like he's just can't ever really initiate and fight. The damage over time is too much for him to handle. He can't man, you know, go 1v1 against the Tiny or even the Slardar. Those are very, very good heroes against Troll. He, one, has to get a BKB, and he also has to get a Blink. He has to be able to just run in there, catch a support, stun lock him, and then run away afterwards. Like, if he can Blink on to, like, say, the Dazzle, kill him instantly, or, say, even the Wisp, kill them right away, then he's done his job. But he can't do that without either a Blink or a BKB, which is a lot of gold. Top lane, Kuroki. He's in trouble. The Avalanche hits. The toss uh, actually goes on the Wisp, but it does get the tether to slow him a little bit. Our TCT is up top. I don't know if he gets this kill because he can always just relook K yeah, out in one just second TP. anyway. No, it's TP. Our TCT maybe with a Basher gets that kill, but even then, yeah, they would have relocated. It's a bit optimistic, but he's just going to take over the top lane farm. Ooh, bottom. They have relocate for bottom now. Die may maybe in trouble. He does have Blink Force, but. They can bait this out. They can bait out a lasso and then relocate. This would be bad for Secret. Yeah, they are baiting indeed. This They're going to really use Night Posh. Might go down. He stays alive. Has Supernova. No. On cooldown, but S4 is going to go down. The big bait coming out from Vega. They secure the kill, and they're looking for more. Zai on the run. Does have his Firefly, so Tron able to blink into there and use his Slytherin Crush. But again, it was exactly like you called it. They relocate in. They bait up the last, so beautifully done. Um, and Vega get the kill. We'll see how nice Arteezy can carry this if, if at all. I mean, I'm really worried. I don't think Troll's going to do anything this game. And this was their last pick. I'm wondering if they just impulsively thought, oh, because I, I think Phoenix was the last pick for Vega. Yes. And they're like, we want to we want to be able to kill the Supernova very quickly. Let's just pick the Troll. Which maybe was impulsive. I don't know. But I, I just I fear that Troll won't be able to do anything in this game. Stun does hit Arteezy. Very, very tanky with his back turn. He does have a little bit of support uh, below. Ron's on the run, though. He's got that sprint going. He's he's a fast he's a fast dude. He's going to try to go for the Slither Crush. Might find it. Arteezy does get tossed at the last second of that TP. He's going to fall yet again. It looks like they're in charge coming. The Avalanche secures the kill, and Tron gets the last right click. And also, down bottom, there was a Courier in the tree line. Oh, and they actually lose the Dire Courier. Courier trades. Radiant Courier dies. Dire Courier goes down. Dire Courier has a uh, recipe for a Yasha for no one. Radiant Courier was sitting outside of the bottom tier one for no apparent reason. Yeah, I clicked on it and I saw it. Meanwhile, mid lane, they're going to jump in a nine posh. They get the kill with the Fiend's Grip. Arteezy says Kappa. Oh, Jesus. Puppy's going to get chased down. He has no usage of that Fiend's Grip. He also has no brain step. And Zai gets in, gets the last open to no one. Going to keep him on the high ground, but doesn't do anything. Just kind of making sure that Puppy stays alive. Brain step now. Sima and Puppy going toe to toe. The weave is up, and now Sima can maybe man fight. Deciding not to. Tiny does get the kill. The tier one down bottom, I think. Now, Seamer getting chased down. Flame break. He doesn't have grip. He does, but he's not going to be able to use it. Yes, he just gets it off. Now the toss avalanche. And Kuroki getting a bit too aggressive. Silly. Goes down. Diving for whatever reason. He goes to the Tiny, which gives him even more farm. Yeah, that was that was pretty silly. And I mean, it was a good idea, but the Grave was clearly going to come out. So, nicely played. This Wisp and Tiny are just all over the map and where they need to be creating pressure. 
And when they're, even when they're not getting kills, they're still pushing out side lanes at the same time. They're going back, pushing, TPing back with their actual TP scrolls. To just, they're just playing the Wisp Piney phenomenally. They did not play it well in the lane. Uh, obviously, as we talked about, and kind of uh, we're expecting the Bristlepack to do quite well in mid. It was a very nice counter pick for that. But they just let this slip away, and I'm actually really scared for Secret. I don't know if they have the punchy power. It's funny that I talked about saying this could be one of the uh, fastest games yeah. we've seen, but definitely not. It was, and no. it really was that over aggression once they went up to the to the jungle. They're trying to get that stack with just two members, and it just it really has not paid off. I felt like they've done that like three or four times now as well, and that that just that is not going to benefit you. That is not going to finish the game off if you can't oh. secure the kill. Zai actually misses that blink lasso, and of course it is Tron with a quick fit trigger finger, so he'll stay alive. But they might secure Roche for secret now. Amplified damage is down, but with Battle Trance, with right click, with Quill Spreads, with Viscous Dizku, if they want to, they probably could take Roche, but they're going to decide against it. They're going to go back to the jungle, which they have this Observer Ward here for the dire side, so they know exactly the movements of uh, Secret at this point. And now... The smoke comes out from Vega. Nine Posh might be a bit of a bait here. Sitting nearby, there is an Observer Ward here at the, the Ancients. They'll they'll spot out Nine Posh, but they don't know where anyone else is. In secret. Meanwhile, Zai gotta get jumped out. Oh, he's the one with the quick trigger what? figure now. <laughs> Dingy Blink Dagger, Pleasantries. Pretty nice. That one, I think, was a bit more impressive because I actually think the first Slardar Blink was not intentional to get out. I think he just was getting the rune and blinking away. So that was like just... Fortuitous for him, but that one was just very fast reactions from Zai. And he actually has a Yules now, so it's going to increase his movement speed. He's up to 420, Blaze it. Which is obviously good for him. He can just pull people back a little bit faster. Maybe he gets a Mask of Madness after a BKB. He definitely needs a BKB, but here we go, Roshan. With the Amplify damage now, negative 15 armor. It's actually not falling as fast as I thought it would. Still, Still falling. falling pretty quick. Still falling fast enough. Uh, Flamebreak's gonna go. He's not able to see a Roche kill. It was a close call, actually, for Zai, but they're gonna try to fight on the back end of this. Ortiz's gonna walk in. Maybe not the best idea. I don't He's know He's gonna get caught out. This. The toss, the supernova's gonna come in as well. S4 jumps in, but he is alone. He doesn't have a BKB. He has a Blink Dagger, but they do get the kill onto the Phoenix. Death Ward flying out as well. Tron taking a lot of the damage. Lasso, all of a sudden, they are in trouble. Noah tried to TP out the Nightmare. Nine Patch buys back, but he can't help. Toss is gonna go, doing some work. Cleaves. Taking some heroes down, but S4 is not going to fall. No one going to go down. The Aegis, he'll probably die twice. And suddenly that blink, that blink, and the usage of the Whirling Axis from S4 does so much work. Arteezy stacking up the Quill Sprays. Icarus dive going through. Arteezy going to get tossed Avalanche. She's getting low. Cleave damage, but the Maledict and the Witch Doctor getting the kill. And now Nod Posh might even have a die back here. The Whirling Axis, he can't get to the high ground. He'll fall. Five dead all across the board. They actually lose seven heroes in the process of that team fight. And secret obliterate Vega. Not even a hero alive. Nobody is alive for Vega at this point. Yeah, just trickle effect, man. They just all kind of died one after the other. And if that Phoenix Ult had erupted or whatever it is, it was completely the other way around. It was so close. They got a very nice stun from the Slardar just with like two more auto attacks. But that's this is where that patrol pick finally comes into play. That ultimate was really, really effective in getting the extra auto attacks off onto the shell or onto the egg. Had they not got that egg kill, I guarantee Vega would have taken that fight. So it was very, very. It actually looked like. It, I mean, it was a very one-sided team fight, but it could have been so bad for Secret. I thought when Ortiz was walking in there, I thought for sure that might have been a mistake, but that he sacked the quill spray damage like crazy, and then S4 Blink did had a beautiful whirling axes, and they just couldn't do any damage really, and. That was without the Aghanim Scepter for Kuroki. He has level 2 Ag's ult coming out for the Witch Doctor. Next fight, if they could take it uh, on Secret's terms, this might be a disaster. So they get a set of Raxes as well. 29 minutes in, we were talking about the, the potential threat from a Tiny. Again, the game's not over, and nobody's better at, you know, taking the base than Vega is Tiny Eye of Combo, but still uh, a tough game now for Vega at this point. Yeah. I mean, they have really strong base pushing, too, on Secret. Like, Troll is one of the best in the entire game. And like I said, that Blink Dagger is really, really effective. And he, that's what he picked up. I think BKB is definitely the next choice. If he's feeling a little bit confident, just because they picked up the mid racks, I think it would still be okay to just go straight for a Scotty. But BKB is still very, very good this game. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, 
the BKB, I thought he I thought he might have get the BKB instead of the Blink Dagger, but I mean it shows that that the uh, the Blink Dagger is actually maybe the better choice in this situation for how much damage he actually did in the team warp that he got going his way. So Arteezy will take down the tier two tower top for free. There's the BKB done for the troll warlord, which we were talking about. Now we'll probably see something like that Scotty, which we discussed as well. So he's got some time before he gets there. Obviously, he'll push into the mid lane. Not much to push other than a couple of creeps here close to the high ground. Arteezy's pushing up top, trying to force out rotations. His bottom lane is being pushed in by the Slaughter, by the Tiny, and the Iron. They do have Relocate. Tron does have a TP scroll and he'll have to use it. Battle Trance is going to go in S4 on the front lines. Sunray's going to go, trying to push the wave back. They already do a lot of damage to this Tier 3 tower. And I guess if you're secret, you could just split the map up and make sure that you don't get relocated on and just take all this farm. Yeah, they, they brought him back to the base too, which is really important, so... They had no glyph on the side of Vega. They ran away when the uh, weave came out, which was smart. And they forced the rotation back from Tiny Wisp, which means they're not pressing outside lanes. They're not farming. They're not really doing anything. So it was a nice move from Secret to just kind of say, hey, let's not let them get in their groove. Let's not, you know, have them push a tier two tower when we're not getting anything out of it. So they're forcing them back and it's the right call. Yeah, this is, uh, I don't know. I guess if you're Vega, you have to really kind of be patient in this game now. And the problem with that is that I think if you're secret, you just put push and, and keep the lanes pushed in and you kind of have to force a, a big relocate out. And Tiny doesn't even assault Kyros yet, so taking down towers is not going to be easy for him. He does have the Manta style, which is huge for pushing as well, but it's going to take some time, I think, if you're Vega at this point to, to really get back into this one. And if you're secret, just wait for the next Roshan and I think you go again. So we might be waiting a while before we see any high ground pushes. You know, the other thing that's great for Troll, is, and maybe why they picked it too, is these Whirling Axes are really good against Tiny. Like, the yeah. missed chance and making him... It, it really renders him somewhat useless once he has that debuff onto him. Um, now obviously, he's attacking so hard, and, but if he's missing all those attacks, it doesn't matter what your damage is. And so I'm wondering if that's another reasoning. It's, if it's one, just because Troll's a great hero. Two, if it's because it's it was picked in response to the Phoenix who was picked up last, so the egg is just not very effective, and it hasn't been this entire game. Or a three for that last reason I just said. I feel like the the chant the the fact that that miss chance is so high is just another reason why Troll is an amazing hero. Yeah, I, I feel Odd. like it needs to be lower. In, in all honesty, thirty like percent maybe. Maybe forty percent. Yeah. Sixty is just. It's really really high. I, I mean, you essentially miss all the time. <laughs> At least it feels that way. Yeah, it definitely does. It like, seems I've like yeah, that's that's probably I think forty percent is right around where it should be. I agree with you. I've never, like, manned up after getting Whirling Axed and not missed an attack. Like, I've always missed an attack. I'll, I'll be like, oh, I got 40% chance, let's do this. Nope. Like, there's a troll on the other team, you have to buy an MKB, and that's what it feels like. That shouldn't have to be the reason, honestly, to buy a B MKB. Uh, oh. Our Ziggs is going to get Nightmare at Fiend's Group as well, and dead. That's a big pick. They'll, they'll grave him. He might be able to tether away. He actually is going to live, it looks like. The cast. They won't Very die nice. in the base. Very nice support. This Dazzle's really been on point this game. Yeah. Well, the one little mind slip bottom when he kind of went aggressive while they were relocating out. Other than that, he's really been playing very, very well. Graves have been so annoying for Secret. You can see it. They're like so close to kill, like a sure kill. And it'll yeah. just be stopped halfway because of the Grave coming out. They can't really... You don't have an axe, you can't burst through it. So, kind of tough for uh, Secret this game, but at the same time... They don't have the, the team fighting potential with, say, like a Witch Doctor ult on the backside. Like, that's the difference. You don't have, like, the lockdown from a Bane, and you don't have the, the team fight from the Witch Doctor. Although, Weave is very good in its own right, but... Yeah, I mean, on paper, the Phoenix ult is amazing, but we just have not seen it been able to be effective for a number of reasons. One, he just had an awful laning stage, so he has very little farm. Two, the troll ult is very, very strong. And then, th that's pretty much it, but that's enough to really stifle his effectiveness with his ulti. He needs level 3 uh, Supernova, and he's not really close to that. He needs I think to also make attacks. sure he gets like, all his fire spirits off, and he needs to go in relatively late. Oh, relocate Ooh. aggressively. EKB's gonna go, though, and Zyme might be able to stay alive here. His team nice actually bash. backs up. They're gonna use the Yule Scepter. Ethward's gonna go through. How much damage will they actually be able to do with this? RZ and Tron taking the heavy amounts of damage here, but they've already... Zai staying alive in the meantime. He's able to blink away, TP out. Oh, no. Supernova for free, and Kuroki just walks away. He waltzes out. Meanwhile, bottom lane, S4 going out of RZ. He's gonna be able to tether away. Kuroki TP's out just in time. The Slytherin Crush was almost there. And a lot of abilities exchanged in kind of a... A game of footsie, it feels like, with nothing actually happening, so... Zai is playing really well. Easily the MVP, I would say, here for Secret. Just being able to blink out, creating space, very nice farm, 
Flame breaks when he needs to, last swing when he needs to. It's just been really on point with this Batrider play today. Uh, I'm curious. Didn't I feel like Zai, he played um, the three position, the offlane for you guys when you were in stay free, right? Yeah. He was really good back then. I'm surprised he never played it when he first came into the Dota scene. But now our Zeke got to get caught out the lasso. The tether is going to be up. And he... Obviously. And another big kill in there. The IOs died twice like that in the past couple of minutes. Maybe they try to go high ground now with no buyback up for the IO. So they'll try to fo force something here. It looks like they're going to find out. No one is going to get Nightmare. They have Fiend's Grip. They will have Grave nearby. S4 blinks up to the high ground. He's going to try to zone out Sima the Slayer. Pops the BKB. Sima has to Grave himself. He has to pro prioritize surviving. No one is going to try to TP out. Death Ward goes onto Illusion, but does get the kill because of the Aghanim's bounces. And they take three down. They're forced to buy out. Draw now. Nightmare up as well. Arteezy running at him with the Viscous Nails Goo. They're stacking up the stacks. Goo as well as Sticky Day Palm. Sunrise try to keep him alive, but he falls so damn fast. He does have buyback as well. He might have to use it. Meanwhile, the uh, Tiny has to back away, and RTZ heads straight towards the bottom Tier 3 tower. This might be enough for Secret to take at least a Tier 3 and a set of racks, if not more here in this game. Forced out. They're going to back away. They don't want to fight any further. It looks like, well, they might try to go again. They're doing a good job about making sure this whiff gets pressure before the fight even happens. Here we go. Blink. Was that a blink in from Tiny? It was, yeah. Arteezy still pretty tanky. He's going to try to go for the Rex now, going for the Supernova instead. Zai's going to bring it down. Arteezy is so low. Meanwhile, the buyback from Nine Posh. The Sunray secures the kill. He buys back to get Arteezy. Diving a bit too deep. They already got the Tier 3 tower. Arteezy with no buyback. They relocate the Tiny out. Zai's going to blink away in the end. They're going to TP top with your purple player. That's going to be S4 heading to the top. Tier 2 tower to make sure he secures farm. They push them back for Vega. They hold the line. Vega stay alive for the time being. Look at the net worth, man. Like, it was so close for the longest time. It actually, first it was really devastating for Vega, and everyone was farmed on secret, and then, you know, some throws happened. And then I was like, okay, yeah, Bristleback's really farmed, but, like, everyone from Vega's pretty decently farmed. But look at this. Outside of the Tiny, every single member of Team Secret's more farmed than every other member of Vega. The, uh, the Midas for Puppy, which he got very early, is paying off. This mech is a gem. Midas, obviously, the Blink Dagger. We already talked about the Ags, that, and of course, the Blink Dagger for Kuroki. And at least for Vega, they are going to get Roshan, which is huge because Tiny will not have buyback. Flame Break's going to go again from Zaya. This is the second time he's done that cheeky play. Force? Lasso? Can he get the Aegis? He snatches it! Zai gets the Lasso and the Aegis. He'll lose it. But that is so worth it. And Night Bosch is very low as well. He doesn't have Supernova. The blink out immediately. This third crush not well timed. Zai on the run. Gonna BKB. No bash, Maybe no there's bash, a bash. No bash. Tron not gonna get there. No. Yes, he does. He gets the bash. But look at top lane is being pushed in by S4. <laughs> Zai throws up the rage phase for Max. The emote is there. They get the courier as well, I believe. That's the rating. No, that's the dire courier going down. Where did it die? It had a Mystic Staff. It died. At the secret shop. Oh no, they're gonna relocate top play Tron. Getting feeds gripped up. He'll stay alive. Puppy's gonna have to back away. He's gonna fall S4 TPing out. The bash is not there for Tron. They are not able to get the tier 3 tower, but they are spreading Vegas so very thin at this point of the game. This game, man. Oh my god. Zai with the plays just everywhere, left and right. And actually, I. That is just crazy. Actually, snatches the Aegis. Still buy some time, just blinks out, and yeah, good stuff, man. Yeah, excellent, excellent stuff so far. And with that, we're going to send it over to Pimp Local for our first replay of the day. Pimp, what's up, man? Right, since there was a boatload of fun, let's just have another look. I just want to quickly point out that I tried to use a smoke, interesting enough, just so he had uh, some sort of space, so he didn't need to drop it. He didn't have the BKB, well, you know, he just doesn't care. Yules in, jumps in there, Roche died, well, just a few seconds late, and he gets it. Lesser wasn't that part, uh, I mean, that on point, but, I mean, who cares? At this point, it's all about denying the Aegis. Yes, the Bash later on was very lucky, but in the end, I mean, holy shit, that was crazy. It's just amazing, and that's die for you. I mean, yep, that's the guy. <laughs> Back to you, Mod. Thanks, Pimp. So far, Vega corralled in their base, and there's the scatter we were talking about for the Troll Warlord. So all of a sudden, S4, who didn't have that big of an impact earlier on, He's starting to put in work, and I think, obviously, more importantly, Arteezy is as well. They are both very tanky. Arteezy finishes up the Satanic, and there is the BKB for Tiny, but how much is that going to do exactly? BKB for Tiny? Well, the BKB on Tiny with Wisp is 
kind of double-edged sword. Like, you have your own magic immunity, but you don't get the buffs up from the Whiff Tether, which is the whole reason why you want this combo. So typically you don't see this picked up. This just tells me basically that they... They're in a really bad spot, right? Like, they yep. they absolutely need to make sure that the time to live is even if he's not getting buffed up with extra damage. Here we go, relocate aggressively. Arteezy's gonna get jumped on, taking a lot of damage. Already used the Satanic, he's on the cliff! Arteezy's he's on the cliff! He's gonna fall, it looks like he should have buyback, I believe. No, no way, he doesn't have buyback. He's down for 80 seconds, but already the top tier three tower is gonna fall. S4 split pushing, ratting it up. Goes to work, gets the tier three tower, they have to go back. They have to add Omen try to defend. Kuroki in the Wait. meantime setting mid, but... Okay, what happened there? Was that like a flame break onto an, an enemy, and then that enemy was who Arteezy got... To whom he got to? tossed? Yeah. I think so. That was weird. I might have... I, maybe it was a force F, but I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. I think you're correct in that. I don't know. That was... That was really weird. <laughs> it's like, did Zai just flame break him? Wait, no. That can't happen. <laughs> <laughs> kind of question what's real at this point. It's like, what? What's happening? Well, apparently this game isn't over yet. In fact, if you look at experience, it's dipped down almost over 10k. Uh, net worth is dipped down about 5k, actually. It's still 20,000, which is insane. But Vlad's coming up for the Wisp. That's actually a very, very big pickup in keeping the, the Tiny to alive, extra armor, huge amounts of uh, lifesteal. Like, when you're lifestealing, what is it, like 15%? 16% mm -hmm. and you're hitting for 400. That's a very very large amount of life still you're getting every single attack So yeah, it almost feels like at this point. It really just comes down to fights I mean no one could use a lot of items obviously, but They have the you the tools to work with here in terms of being able to take down buildings and take fights S4 is gonna back away Our Zeke sees him and just turns the corner and says I don't think so we're not we're not dealing with that right now No one's gonna head back home and Secret now again. You can wait for Roshan or is pretty much not six slot. He has a lot to work with, though. He has the Satanic, obviously, the Assault Cross Vanguard, which he could turn into a Crimson Guard still, but not doing so. He's going to take another Ancient Stack here. They're going to rotate top. Lasso is going to be up in the Tron. Can they find this kill? Haste Rune is up, but there's no follow-up. They're going to Yule Sim. S4 is nearby. Whirling Axes are going to hit. S4 not going to go for the kill, though. They decide against it. So Lasso used in an interesting scenario. That was kind of weird. Yeah, I All didn't right. see the beginning of it. I was looking at something else, but he TP's bottom with bots. His last was on cooldown for another 35, so just trying to push out these waves. Phoenix did manage to pick up a Shiva's. I, I don't know if you talked about that, but actually it's going to be really effective by slowing the enemy attack just a little bit to help him maybe get off a supernova. Him being level 17 as well is huge. I mean, that could be what really turns this fight. In the next fight for Vega, like it's they're starting to get some better team fights despite being down, you know. 20,000 gold. Yeah. But they got the items. They got the Vlads. They got BKB cheese. They have cheese on Tiny, which is really, really good, obviously, with Wisp. Maybe even Wisp should, should take that cheese. I don't know. Yeah, so, I think that that's probably the better choice. I, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I have to ask you, though. We talk a lot about the BKBs for the Tiny, but what about Arteezy getting a BKB? It's kind of surprising to me that he doesn't have one at this point. Do you think that might be the next item he goes for? Hmm. I... Mm, Maybe I. I guess like, honestly, the most annoying thing for him is like getting his attack slowed down by Phoenix. Yeah. Oh, here we go, Lasso. Lasso with the cracking. The avalanche actually comes out from no one. They can fiends grip him. They have vision. Puppy's not going for it though. Instead, he's gonna blink, looking for the eye. That's the target they want to go for. The flame break. He actually is able to get tethered to the low ground. No, he still has the tether. It's gonna cast through. Death Lord going in. Our Zeke, the guard's about to go down. Our Zeke is about to fall to the right. Click of Arteezy. Can't get the kill yet. Quill sprays off cooldown. Finally pops it off. BKB for Zai wants to jump in, but no last was available. Immediate buyback for RZ. Gets forced out. RTZ now on the run. Tron, hot pursuit. Looking for maybe a blink initiation with a Slytherin crush. Ready to go. He's going to find it. On to RTZ. Gets the amplify off. Now the blink forward. No one gets the avalanche as well. Yule Scepter up onto the tiny. RTZ still on the run. Gets bashed up in the back of the head. BKB now goes for no one, as well as for Tron. RTZ in trouble. He will have buyback. Will he have to use it is the question. Uh, Zai on the backside, trying to back away. Meanwhile, S4, the rat is real again. Battle Trance goes. TP in from 9 Posh. Not really the target you're looking for. Bash is up, not going to be there. Has to pop the Supernova. S4, his mission accomplished, is now going to try to run away. He has his Blink Dagger in one second. He's going to use it. Goes up to the high ground. They don't chase further. They're a little too far away. 
And S4 should be able to get out. No, they're going to relocate. Toss from oh! Tron. Long range. They're going to get the kill from downtown. Tron gets the kill. Beautiful toss from no one. Jesus. The poor man's blink and then relocating forward after he stuns out. That was pretty, pretty fun to watch, man. And they get the other kill onto Troll yet again, who still has that Scotty. Not the most effective Phoenix Supernova, but uh, his other stuff was on cooldown. His Ghost Scepter was starting to wear off, and he felt really scared that he was going to die. So I guess it's not the longest cooldown in the world. They're, they're holding this, man. Vega are holding this. And I got to say, the support play between both the Wisp and the Dazzle, from healing one another over and over, has just really been phenomenal. And keeping them long enough in these team fights to to actually turn it. It's just been really, really good play from this Dazzle and this Wisp. Yeah, I mean, even if the Wisp goes down, they have the Dazzle Grip to work with, and they stay alive a lot longer than they should in a lot of these situations. They also give a lot of room to the Tiny. Blink, is die looking for a BKB pop because he was going for that Lasso, but now the Yules goes instead. He realizes that his team is not here, and Vega is here in force. The Blink forward, Avalanche misses from no one. Can't really connect on that, but a good try nonetheless. And because they have this Tiny helping out, no one gets so much room. He's now the highest in net worth in the game. Uh, by just about a thousand, he has about six thousand gold on him. They're gonna head to Roche. This might be a secret. Are gonna walk in. They have the Agonips of Kroki. Kroki, but he's in trouble. He walked right in. They're not gonna go. For that could have been an easy kill. Instead, they turn their attention to Roshan, and Zai's not there to use uh, his, you know, flame break to lasso. No magician tricks coming out this time for secret. That's an age is coming out to the tiny. Tron picks up the cheese. Oh boy. Cheese. These Roshans are just. That was really weird, by the way. I, he just kind of walked in, was like, hey, guys, and then walked out. Um, and... Arteezy, didn't he already have an Assault Kuros? Or am I insane? What? Did they buy another one or something? He bought another one. I'm pretty sure he had one before. Uh, that's going to bother me either way. I'm, I'm not sure if that was the case. Mop packs or Pimp, do you have any idea? Am I crazy? Who knows? Yeah, Did he drop yeah. it and then... He might have. I think that, that could have like been a thing. problem. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Hmm. Maybe I'm insane. Regardless, he's had it for a while, exactly. But he just bought another one, it said, from the side shop, for the secret shop. Huh. That's what yeah, it said, I anyway. Know. I guess I'm crazy. Either way. Um, But yeah, Tiny, he's got a lot of gold. Like, he has his Aegis. I'm wondering if this BKB at bottom lane... Oh, they have a relocate. Here we go. They're going to use it. S4 has his BKB. He's going to have to use it. Toss is going to go. Uh, no bashes from stun. Tron. They don't have a, a craggy proc, obviously. Magical's not going to work out anyways. Puppy's going to blink through. Nightmare's going to go. Avalanche toss. Now the BKB for no one. He does have Aegis to work with. Toss back. Puppy in trouble. Manta style. Puppy next. Today's alive. There's the last one going through. But he has an Aegis. He has another life to work with. They can try to relocate Gross. him out. Actually, it's on cooldown. I relocated to get in here, and no one's going to fall again, it looks like. Arteezy's going to right-click him. Puppy not going to Fiend's Grip. They don't need to. Cracky Prox at S4. He doesn't give a damn. He's dead for 87 seconds. Does have a buyback, but that is a huge kill. And they're going to find a DD rune. Ice Frog, please. Arteezy's going to grab it quickly. The second they saw that troll BKB, they should not have pursued. They had no reliable stun. Their only real stun was the... The chance of Slaughter blinking and getting a stun, and even then, I don't think they get the kill. So, th that was just way too much overextension from Vega. It's going to force out a buyback from Tiny. If Secret even just run away and then try to find a cleaner fight next time, getting that kill on Tiny is potentially the game. So, that's a huge force out from Team Secret. They still have the cheese on Slaughter, I believe. So, he can give that to... Yeah, he actually gives... No, they have two cheeses now. Okay. There's a smoke here coming out from Vega. Tiny buys a Crystalis. Thought he was going to go for an AC, but no, wants the Chrysalis instead. Extra damage, I suppose. S4, if he gets caught out here, this could be big. They're going to find a blink, but oh, he BKBs. No. They missed the avalanche, just missing it. They'll be on the hunt, but they are not going to chase any further. They see Zai is down bottom. They notice he's in the lane, pushing it out, and uh, that could have been big, but a miss, oh. unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. I, maybe you let the Slardar go first, because it's a little bit harder to react to. Like, sometimes if you hit the avalanche in a very awkward position, you can actually dodge it even though the like the graphic shows that you're getting hit by it, so it gives you more time to react. So maybe they just let the, the Slardar initiate because it's a faster, cleaner initiate, but or initiation I should say. Oh, that that's kinda that's gotta burn a little bit. So that means mm, five and a half minutes there for the next buyback on Tiny. Yeah, he's got a while, that's the biggest thing. That's uh I feel like if you're a secret, you have to put that to good use, though. 
You have to maybe push it to find the fight, which is something you were talking about. Again, Roshan's down for a long time. They're going to find Zai with a Slytherin Crush. He should be okay. Maybe no bashes coming through. Zai looking to turn, but he has no follow-up. No backup to speak of. And he'll just... He's making his home with his bottom lane. He'll Firefly. He'll use himself for whatever reason. Stay take, alive. Take and... off the, uh, the amp damage, I think. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. No. Daedalus were tiny. Yep. Yeah, Zai's got... So he's got... He's six-slotted now. He's got two lassos, two BKBs, two forces, two everything. In fact, I say you kill Zai first, man. He, he is the most important thing, and the fact that he's canceling like every single one of these defensive relocates is just really impressive, too. It's not just one, it's not just two, it's like every single one is being canceled. Flame breaks are on point, for the most part. Flame break, Yules, uh, it's just, yeah. whatever he has in his arsenal, even, yeah, he can use it twice now, too, so. Alright, both of these Raxes are naked and Secret look like they want to maybe at least put pressure on the bottom lane. Will they continue? We'll have to wait and see. Do they have Glyph for yeah. the Dire Team? Absolutely. They have no buyback like we mentioned on the Tiny. Buyback status for everyone else, it's just Tron at this point, which is probably the most important. I mean, obviously there's no buyback on the Tiny, so the next one is... Maybe the Io is actually more important than Tron having buyback, but still. They at least only have one buyback here. There's an Ax up on the Phoenix, man. Have you ever seen this before? I've seen it once or twice, but... It's just pretty funny. It's hard to get off, though. That's the thing. He has to hope he doesn't get bursted down. Yeah, I've never, um, I've never played. Well, I've, see, I've never even played Phoenix, but with the Ags, I don't know what the range is to get heroes into your. your if supernova. you hover over Supernova, that's the range that you have uh, to. Okay. Get, so yeah. So they have to be relatively close to you then. Yeah. Okay. Well, they have multiple ways of saving one another. Like, look at this. They have. The Dazzle and all his stuff, the Wisp relocate, the Wisp just overcharge and whatnot with the cheese. He can heal anyone up from nothing to full in basically an instant with this cheese. Like if Vega on paper play their cards right, they could actually do quite nicely in the team fight. It's just a matter of making sure they don't get lassoed and one hero dies from the get-go. And actually that can happen twice, remember, because he's got a refresher. Yeah. And then making sure that this Bane doesn't get a good ulti off. Double lasso, the two lassos at once is pretty cool to watch. I, I'm, I'm kind of hoping Zai is able to pull that out, but for Vega's sake, maybe not so much. That won't be fun. <laughs> uh, Artis is sitting on BKB now, so he did end up buying the BKB, so that's that's pretty big. I'm, I'm not sure if we discussed that. It, it probably was purchased a long time ago. And again, if Valve, if we had those item timings, if we had those item timings in the game, this would be a lot easier for us. Him saying that he'll write a program, let's do it. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> but yeah, BKB is going to help Arteezy run around a little bit easier in the fights. That's a butterfly now for the troll. And he yeah. sold... What did he sell? Uh, uh, his lads, his lads. Yeah. Okay, so... so he's almost 6 lot. He needs to sell his phase and get I, uh, bots, so... Yeah, phase for bots, exactly. I still think Arteezy really needs a basher. It's, it's really good on Bristleback because... It, it makes it so you can't get him as easily anymore. Like, th these are still fantastic items. But, um... But if you just run away from him, focus the troll, kill the bat... I think, like I said, bat riders of the utmost importance as far as killing heroes for Vega. Um, he just does so much for their team. Bro has a scythe, by the way. Who? Brokey, the witch doctor. <laughs> oh my god. And farmed heroes, I think Puppy's also going for one. And, oh, there it is, just kidding, he's got it. <laughs> Oh my god. So, three scythes? No, two scythes, double uh, lasso, no abyssal yet, no basher, which you talked about. RTC probably goes for basher next. Yeah, they're they're looking solid right now. They just have to get in the base and maybe try to finish this game off. Vega obviously have a lot to work with here, but I don't know if they can stand up to all this. I'm wondering, and I'm no Phoenix player by any means, so flame me if you want, but I'm wondering if BKB instead of the Axe would have been a little bit smarter now for Phoenix. Obviously, I don't think he expected these two Hexes coming out this fast from the support so secret, like who does, but I think if he's able to freely move around at least until he gets some good Fire Spirits off and an effective Supernova, he could really be the difference maker in these fights. I'm just fearful that he just caught out right here. Puppy with a relatively slow initiation there. He he took his time. They're going to lasso up onto Seam of the Slayer. That's a big target. Phoenix Group goes. The refresher coming out from Zai has yet to use his second lasso. They don't blow up anybody yet. They relocate out. 
one of the heroes now. No one getting targeted down. He will not have buyback if he goes down. The grave is up. Is this going to be the fight? Tron jumps in. Arteezy has his BKB. He held on to it for the longest time. No one's going to fall. Now the Death Ward comes out. Tron getting slowed up. Has to eat the cheese, but will still fall in the end. He will have buyback. He's going to have to use it. RZ not going to be so lucky. He'll fall down. Nine Posh stays alive as well. Only two up for Vega. And I don't know they can hold this up against all five of Secret. They're going to barrel down mid. They're going to go for the Tier 4 Towers. This might as well be it for Vega in this first game. game. I don't know why the, the Phoenix didn't go in and, and put the the Tiny in the egg. Can you not do it when he's BKB'd? It, that must be I'm why. Not sure. Either way. It, yeah, it was a little bit slow. Yeah, Nine Slardar. Flash is going to get caught out, so it doesn't matter either way. Agatha Subgrade didn't even use the Supernova. He isn't available, so... Yeah. EG's called, though. Tiny will buy back, but it's a bit too late. He's too late to the party. Big Cleave actually gets a big crit. Not that it matters. The engine blows up shortly thereafter. And our first game is a barn burner. Lots of action. One of the most exciting games I've seen in a while. Team Secret will take the victory narrowly 1-0 here in this first game. And what a game it was, man. This is why I said BKB on Tiny is a double-edged sword. Because even though he cast that BKB... And that fight, Wisp was just waiting the whole time, waiting the whole time for the BKB to go down. He had Tether plus Cheese available. He could have, could have completely healed up Tiny from full. But then he just he couldn't wait that long because there's too many other things happening. Wisp then got targeted. I think he got slept actually in the middle of that a second time too. But he actually tried to get the Tether off at the last second before Tiny died. He had the Grave on him. He had no HP. Had he got the Tether plus Cheese off, it could have been a different fight. Also, Phoenix didn't cast his ulti. I don't know why. But this is why BKB is a double-edged sword when you run the t what, uh, the Tisp whiny, <laughs> the uh, tiny wisp, because you cannot use that overcharge to your advantage in crucial in crucial times like that. So I would still say very nicely played by Vega. Like they showed some real talent, some real poise, even being down by such an immense amount early on. 